Hey everyone, this podcast is part of Story Mode, the podcast network of gamefully unemployed. You can support us and gain access to other great exclusive podcasts at patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Halbkast mit Tom Reimann und David Bell. Hey everyone! Hello, hello, yeah. friends. Mm. 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 Welcome to another episode of Hypecast. Hypecast. Well, we're gonna get hyped about I, all sorts of shit. I think you just found your new intro. Uh, <laughs> Dave's whimpering mm. greeting. Hypecast. Hypecast. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Uh, <laughs> should we say our name? Dave's been sighing like a ghost for the entire day. <laughs> yeah. He's a re- he's really haunting this apartment right yeah, now. He, he really is traipsing about in mm. a fucking gown. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm your co-host Tom Ryman. I'm David Bell, the other co-host, <laughs> and what I'm Adam Gazer, the normal one. Oh, right. the, the person yeah. not doing Ben yes. Kingsley's Mandarin voice. Right, <laughs> you'll never I'm see the other coming co-host. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. The moment you say we're recording, it's just... That's when the sillies take over. I, yeah. I, I you think get, it's... You get the giggles, I think man. it comes from I don't know how to do this. Like, like the intro... Oh, none of us know yeah, how to do no this. One, yeah, none of us do. And so yeah. we just go... We get weird. And when I say none of us, I think the human race. I think right. nobody knows how to intro. Yeah, no human it's not a great has. intro on a podcast. No. What's funny is, like... I don't think your audience totally appreciates that you you collate and really collect a lot of facts for this podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yet at no point is there a section in this document that you have to read to do this podcast that says intro with yeah. any plans. No. Just, that does not exist no. in a collated document. I, I really put entirely too much faith in myself and my ability to come <laughs> up with an intro on the spot. I'm just like, ah, I'll just talk to the intro. Nope. No, you won't. You know what I'll do? I'll I'll just six shoot my way out of this. You know, <laughs> just, the, uh, my way just this. Is like a real gunslinger, <laughs> like a real man from the past. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, it's the show where we talk about new trailers and stuff and get hyped. Yeah, I, that's mm-hmm. and, and I we feel get like hyped. We're already hyped because we should Definitely. share what we're gonna do after this. Podcast. Oh, oh I, right God. after we're, we're going to a, a Thursday night screening of Unfriended Dark Web. Yeah, I've intentionally not learned much about this movie because i know i'm gonna enjoy it did you see the previous unfriended no surprisingly well made yeah it doesn't matter to me if it's well made i this is i mean it should but it doesn't it mattered to me because we went and saw it and it was like okay let's see this movie right that takes completely entirely on a computer screen yeah and they walked out like how did they pull that off they pulled it off yeah Um, it's pretty good it was it's done in one shot i keep i always say that about that movie because that really impressed me like they actually filmed on monitors like that, yeah, and they just had the actors play through the entire uh, story. Yeah, story. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Save I, some money. I feel like this is also a good point to to mention and notice. Dave has been growing accustomed to that energy squirt thing. Like last time I saw him, that thing looked like he had like put a nail in his right. jaw. Right, right. Like he just squirt- like it looked like he had squirted liquid cocaine down his right. throat. Secret- now he's squirting in his mouth like it's water. The like, secret is to aim for the anything. back of your throat. <laughs> Which made me, it made it harder to talk to that's you now. A, that's applicable in many you scenarios. Avoid, you avoid the <laughs> <laughs> Right, but it's like, there's no longer any wincing. Like, you're, you're, you're that's rule, why, because I, I, went, really. I went straight back to the back of the throat. I avoided the taste buds mm. altogether. Like, for a second there, you're really leaning away from the mic like you're a big league in us. I was gonna yeah, be you like, really were. Like, my gonna, voice is going to fucking carry. Yeah. I, was, I was about to be like, just get close to the mic, Orson. Yeah. I'll try to take over the... <laughs> <laughs> he's really killing it right now. I really like what he's doing. Uh, the fact that this energy thing is so incorporated into your lifestyle for you to have learned that is mm-hmm. the thing I admire. I it's just, just a really yeah. easy way to get energy in you. <laughs> cool. Yeah. And let me tell you, it comes through. Yeah. This is the highest energy yeah. mm-hmm. you've ever been. <laughs> he is humming right now. Yeah. yeah. 
yeah. it's 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 tangible. You can feel the air vibrating. <laughs> 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 let's talk about trailers let's, let's talk about trailers sure yeah titans which yeah. is the gritty teen titans the gritty teen titans yeah they yeah. just released this trailer at comic-con today today or yesterday I, forgive me okay so i'm walking in completely ignorant of this series of anything about it other than okay. i watched this trailer what where is this this is a movie or is this tv show? this is a tv, TV show? show that's okay. going to be exclusive to dc streaming universe okay. a streaming which, channel that they're calling dc universe which is Excuse a me. great business idea like the, the, they're just like all right we're dc everybody loves us we're doing great let's doing start our own exclusive <laughs> streaming service mm-hmm. they really don't understand yeah it doesn't feel like it just this well, doesn't the, the trailer has dick grayson as robin come in murder a bunch of thugs and say fuck batman yeah. to the camera yeah cool <laughs> that's how this trailer begins you mean All fuck right. the only cool thing you have do you <laughs> see well that's so not Chill move. that's that's not that's not it's, it's, grayson uh, i mean sure. there's <laughs> this there's this level where people make fun of fans for complaining that a thing isn't like how they remember it but i'm i j- all right this is something that occurred to me about gritty reboots why are they okay when we don't do the opposite we like don't do the opposite, fluffy right? Fluffy reboots? Yeah. Just like that would be insane. Based. That would be insane. Like, oh, we're going to reboot Alien, but make it for kids. That would be insane, right? Like, why do we accept the other way, where it's like, we're going to take this thing that was for kids? Because, I don't... I've, because you want to still watch the thing that you liked or read the thing that you liked when you were a kid, but you went, but I'm an adult now, so it needs to be more adult. I'm right. Like, no. I, I just want to argue, I want to push back on what you said just a little bit, because every single Disney fairy tale is essentially a cutified that's true. reboot of an old story. <laughs> yeah, that's, so that is very true. It's not true. like it doesn't exist. It's, right. it, it's not a reboot of a movie. Right. Yeah. We don't go that way when a movie... Already Although exists. I do want to see like the Nick Jr. version of Hunt for Red October or that something, would be just like a real cerebral, like complicated political thriller. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that doesn't sound that bad to me. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna see Plus, how what's they. What's Sean uh... Connery doing? Let, let him do it. Yeah, he's not doing anything. Well, well Sh- I mean, he's Sean the... Connery. He's where he, is he? He's he's he's, he's in he's, some cabin somewhere. He's done, right? Yeah. Like he's he's the Highlander. He's yeah. the one that lived. Yeah, not, not in the movie, but in real life. Right. Yeah. They tried to get him for S- Spectre, not Spectre. They tried Skyfall. to get him for Skyfall. They tried to get him for Crystal Skull. He's just done. Oh wow. He's, he's re- yeah. He's Skyfall done. was sad because they you see the character that was obviously supposed to be him. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. It's That's Albert true. Finney. Yeah. Instead, I don't know what about this concept, the streaming concept here, is supposed to be the cool thing. Like that's to me one of the failures of this trailer is like I watch it and I don't know what is the cool thing that I'm supposed to get excited about. Like which means a there's too much required pre-knowledge of what this is uh-huh. for a trailer. It de- it definitely does require that you know who the Teen Titans are. Right, which I it's right. like, well then that's you, not a you, sales pitch. You probably know Robin and that's it. Right? I kind of knew that that was Robin only because I read up on it after <laughs> the fact. Yeah. I'm just saying like I'm saying, well who's the fucking trailer for? People who already know this thing is a thing and want it? That's stupid. Make a trailer for people who might just be interested in a fucking project, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I it's a, it's a little bit because it, it's sort of well. Even then, it's it really requires a lot of foreknowledge, and it's not something that you can. Some of these characters, I wouldn't call them obscure because they're on a very popular cartoon show that's sure. about to have a theatrical right. movie. But it's sure. like if you're not plugged into the comics audience, you don't know who like these people are. They yeah. look like a poor man's X Men to me. Or, yeah. like a, or a poor man's whatever that movie with Michael B. Jordan that was like a, a kind of cool offbeat superhero movie. Chronicle. Chronicle, yeah. yeah. They look like that. You know, like, like just another one of those. It also feels like if it weren't for the f- the word fuck and like the murder, it just feels like it's for teenagers. Like, it feels like it it's- It still feels like it's for teenagers. Okay, yeah. It feels like it's for- Like, they're not trying to tap adults. It's not like- I mean, I, I have to assume- even the adult stuff, Jessica Jones and Luke Cage and stuff, uh-huh. mostly watched by teenagers, I assume, right? I don't like, know. I don't, I don't know either. I don't know that either. But the point is that the demographic they want is probably, they're probably trying to get, like, I guess what I'm getting at is that this felt um, like, uh, what's uh, I, I can't think of the word, like immature. Like juvenile, juvenile. Thank you. It you felt like a juvenile it. trailer, yeah. Um, with some f bombs, so it's trying to appeal to teenagers. But then it's like, all right, teens, you want to watch this? 
whip out your debit card and get yeah, the streaming get the service. Streaming service. And it, that's the that it felt like the same problem with Star Trek Discovery. Although I, we were wrong about Star Trek Discovery, They're, it's doing fine. But it was like, hey, old Trekkies, you want to watch Star Trek? Come to our streaming service that you'll absolutely get and have and understand. Like it feels like this the get a streaming like sign up for an exclusive streaming service is a bad way to attract the demographic they're going for. Well, I mean, you know that every single IP in the world is trying this idea right now. Right? Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, because it's the I only mean, way they can make money. A dirty little secret, but, yeah. that's, but Crack was going to do it. Yeah. Like, everybody was going to well, privatize their channel so that you had to pay for a streaming yeah. service, essentially. But the thi- I guess they're not doing it, and they must know this, they're not doing it because it's a good idea. Right. They're doing it because they can't money otherwise. Because Netflix has created a situation where, like, it's devalued everything. Netflix, and I guess I would say MoviePass a little bit, although I think MoviePass yeah. has a better... Uh, system except um, for they're losing money yeah Movie Pass they're is not making any losing money. money hand over fist I, I think what you're saying is interesting because if this is the only way that you can make money you know that you can't make money right it, like this is a proven failing idea has right. anybody done it other than netflix has anyone I mean, done this hbo is doing pretty good hbo but was they've been around for thing. a while yeah, right they, um, they are they've i think been cbs is okay but i don't think again i think all they have is star trek when it's no pre-existing yeah. entity that oh, converts yeah. this way yeah like it's easy for a service that was already successful there's a couple, to incorporate stream i learned there's a couple niche ones like i have okay. a friend who's really into like old and obscure films like foreign films and like films from the 30s and shit and sure. you, there's a streaming service just for that stuff um and i, f- I forget what it is it's it's something it's uh, i don't know i think mgm owns it or something like that but sure. like if you have a smaller niche ones i think they could work out but you'll you'll never be netflix you know no, you're not going to be throwing that netflix money yeah. around that's uh yeah this makes me sad for just sort of the state of getting creative content out there. But also, I'm not sad for DC, because I have yet to see a single thing by them, except for Wonder Woman and the Dark Knight movies by Christopher Nolan that right. I thought was good. Hey, name another thing that's like, oh, that was good. I mean, there are ones that I enjoy, but not. I wouldn't say they were good. Like there There's were... a ton of Marvel things that I don't like, but I still like... That's, that was yeah. still good. It's fine. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, it was good. Like a lot of the Thor guess, ones and you know some Spider Men's. Some Spider Men. Going down that direction, I guess my other question is, and there's probably an answer to this, but has a gritty reboot worked? Yeah, Dark Knight. But as, I, that's like the thing that originated the gritty reboot, right? That's what made everybody. It's not the say, only one like that. I mean, you could call the original Batman by Tim Burton sure, a gritty that. reboot. All right. right, then has anything worked since then? Not. I don't know. I mean, like, I'd have to think a lot about a lot of do properties. Do they keep doing it? I don't know. Because, because they're I don't, cool looking. But they never work. Like, they don't... I mean, Transformers. Yeah, mm-hmm. I guess Transformers made a shitload of money, but like the, I wouldn't even call the first Transformers gritty. It was kind it's, of a silly movie. It's moving from a cartoon but to... But it's definitely not uh, for children. Yeah, it's a PG-13 yeah. movie. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's made by Michael Bay, the most mean-spirited filmmaker in history. Right. Pretty close. Him and Lars von Trier have a tie, I would yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. Lars von Trier. I mean, I, he just needs to be in that conversation. Yeah. Or like it's Boonwell, just, you know? It's that thing of like... I mean, we talked about this with like um, the, the Lone Ranger film, mm-hmm. where it's like, why make a Western? Like... They never. They don't make money. Any. It's it's a genre once that like while. they once in a while. But you you don't pour. You don't like make two hundred. You don't make yeah. two hundred thirty million dollars. And it's Western. that. That's what's so that's insane accurate. when they're like, we're making a gritty Fantastic Four. It's like who is anybody there who's just looking at the list of movies and being like, oh hey look, whenever this happens, it doesn't do good. Maybe we shouldn't do it. I just don't think that's the criteria. I think the criteria is. Like, listen, these are the properties that must be made. Right. And so what's the best way to make them into content that people will consume? Like, I don't like I don't think DC's like, what would be a cool superhero right now? Like nobody at Marvel or DC has been like, you know, we could just make new ones. Yeah. Yeah. What if we just made new superheroes? They haven't seen them. <laughs> like and just incorporate them into the world. That would be fucking awesome. I would be like, oh, a new guy? That That's would be chill. really cool. 
Why don't they do that? Because they know that they 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 want given performing things. They want things that they believe yeah. will perform. So, but so, then, some of the stuff like Jessica Jones is actually a, a pretty new character. And she's I think only it been around a, for like ten years. I, I think, think that was a like really that. good idea to bring that into the forefront. Yeah. The they, right actress, the right show. Mm-hmm. That goes back to if they want to do things that work, then why do gritty reboots? <laughs> like because they don't work. Like why keep doing them? That's what that's what's so baffling to me about it. Is I get like if they are just playing it safe, then why aren't they playing it safe? Well, why also, are they having also, Robin say "fuck Batman"? Right, and murder a bunch and of murder guys, a bunch right. of guys. That's that's, that's 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 yeah. That's jolly Dick Grayson. Like he's not murdering people. He wasn't it's, jolly enough. Yeah, <laughs> he needed to be a little. Jollier. He needed to be a little more jolly. And yeah. also, like after after DC has done such a course correct with. After Wonder Woman, with like Justice League, yeah. you know, literally brightening it up, like they, like the finished yeah. movie. I just saw it for the first time recently. That finished movie is brighter than the trailer was. Oh yeah, like they went in and was Wonder like, Woman. You mean Justice League? Oh, Justice League. Yeah, Justice oh, yeah. League. They it, the the original trailers I saw for it, like it, it showed a lot of stuff from like the end battle at Chernobyl or wherever it yeah. was, and it was like dark. But like right. going in the movie, it's like oh, they came in and brought all the colors yeah. back up. Mm. And like it's jokey, and like it's it's clear that they were tr- that they're trying a course correct in Justice League, and then to go right back with this trailer that has Robin say "fuck Batman" after shooting people, right. cutting a guy's throat and stepping on another guy's neck. It's like Jesus Christ, guys! I'm gonna ask some dumb questions, cause I, and uh, forgive me, you guys and audience, if these are things you're already ahead of. But like, mm-hmm. doesn't the fact that Dick Grayson's in Batman's universe require the sort of shadow of Batman? to artistically render this world like doesn't this sort of exist in batman's universe it does yeah it definitely does okay and i understand what you're saying that the justice league movie is defying that by being a little bit more of a saturated multicolored affair right and just more fun but for dick (laughs) grayson and for robin to try to make him interesting apart from batman without having any of batman as a tether is a risky proposition and this is not a risky this is a risk averse company. This this company is not yeah. really trying to take risks. Right. I understand oh. you're saying they are doing that. I just I just thought of a gritty reboot that's working. Hmm. Riverdale. Oh yeah, Riverdale is working. <laughs> and that idea on paper is yeah. hilarious. I would argue that Archie got gritty in the comics, didn't it? Uh, sometimes. Like, yeah, there they've was tried, like, Arch, they've tried Archie a lot with shot? Archie. He got yeah. shot. I'm trying there to were think zombies. of what what are the shitty gritty reboots that you're thinking of anyway? Fantastic Four probably that is. That was a bad um, movie, yeah. Ninja Turtles did okay, Ninja but Turtles. That, that's not actually that gritty when you watch it. Especially the second one, they did more of a, yeah, like, again, it a course just looks, correct. It looks a little dark, but it's not like... It's just live action, right? It's yeah. just CG live action. I actually liked this movie, but I would say Power Rangers was another one. Um, I enjoyed the Power Rangers movie. I don't know why, I just I enjoyed I, it. You know what he's... You see, um, I, I just, every time he does this, it needs to be called out. Like he gets a, he knows he's pulling some bullshit. No, he knows I, it. Like no, just, I, like you see I, it in his I eyes. Like I watched the Power Rangers get away with movie it. and I enjoyed it. Um, it's a bad movie though, and it didn't do very good, right? Like no, it didn't no. do well. No. Um, and then of course, yeah, all the DC stuff, Suicide Squad. Like I don't know, is they, that it, gritty? Was Suicide Squad? I didn't watch that movie because I knew it was. Gonna it be was bad. definitely like well, the, it was a lot of things. They didn't know what it was, and when, they just. When I think of bad gritty reboots, I think of Snow White and the Huntsman. Oh, yeah, like, there's one. That's one. Like, yep. uh, like all that stuff that's sort of Matrix inspired, right? And Dark Knight inspired. Like those are the two things that sort of fed into all that mid two thousands, early twenty tens, yeah, gritty reboots. Yeah, yeah. Well, those are all just bad because they're all derivative, right? Oh, Spider Man, The Amazing Spider Man. Was the, that gritty? Yeah, the two they made with um, those feel Andrew Garfield. You? Those were pretty gritty, weren't they? I think the first Spider Man was like there was some humor in, in it, but that, like. I th- see, because to me, when you say gritty, it's like no, they're just bringing it tonally to where movies are, right? Like they're I not trying of, to badass it. I guess up, I also know? think of the word grounded with this, right? Because that's what the Dark Knight did. Is they were like, oh, let's make a grounded, realistic Batman as realistic as he would be. In Batman Begins, they did that. Yeah, correct. and that was really cool because you could do that with Batman. Like he was a very, it was a, it was a world that you could actually do that to. And then they're like, hey, let's do that to like Fantastic Four, and it's like, no, you can't do that to fantastic Four. no not with right. a group of people who got space powers yeah and that's the same feeling i get with titans where it's like they're trying to make it like gritty but like the characters are s- like 
I guess silly. Like they're they're comic. Well, book you characters. you have you have Robin who is just a guy, right? Uh, but right. then you have Raven who has powers, and right? Like Beast or Beast Boy who has powers. Is right. like, that actual name Beast Boy? I think so. Need to, that's nope. The green don't guy. Like that. You don't like that? <laughs> no, I think better name. There's also. Been done. There's also the look because whenever they see to think gritty now, they make it dark, like they make it like you can't like see. literally dark. Yeah, yeah where right. like I would like, and that's not what Batman did. I would say successful gritty. I don't know. It, I don't think it's a gritty um, reboot, but Jessica Jones is like a grounded superhero series, but they do it right because they're not. It's not like fucking dark like I, it's not i just keep, ridiculously dark and it feels like it's actually existing in a world that every time you guys world. mention a thing i understand that you sort of mean aesthetically and i get it but like the other key ingredient to all these successful ones is that you have superheroes that mostly exist in isolation from the rest of the superhero universe mm -hmm. yeah which is the opposite of how all the rest of this shit is going yeah so like yeah all the cool ones are the ones where like Batman's the only superhero that you need to know about or care about for right. this movie. He exists in a world where Superman isn't there. Or, like, fucking none of the Marvel dudes are there. Or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he exists alone, and that is why you're allowed to have something that's so tonally specific to a character that works. Mm -hmm. This shit, this D this this right. X-Men but DC that also is indebted to Batman, of course it's not going to work, man, because it's got to... It's got to marry too many things. Like it's not. That's true. It's got to be Batman and the Taylor. Avengers at the same yeah. time. Yeah, exactly. And that's why it should have just done its own thing. I think because again, that's what the Marvel Netflix shows did, which I thought were great. They were like, yeah. you know what? Forget all the movies. Right. We'll mention them in the background. Right. And we'll do a, a more like adult version. So it would have been cool for DC to do this. Is like, you know what? Forget the Zack Snyder stuff. Let's do something completely different. Or go real teen with it. Like, well, that's the so, thing. It could have yeah. been cool if it was like an Edgar Wright version of this or like even a younger, like if it was like the Scott Pilgrim version of this. You right. Know, like that yeah. specific yeah. movie. Well, I think that's kind of what the cartoon show is. Well, that's what right. this could be too. Right. I would it like that. Been, yeah. yeah. Scott Pilgrim was an excellent fucking movie. Yeah. You know, that nobody but me saw. It doesn't matter. It was great. Oh, I saw it. I know. You and I were the only ones. <laughs> I saw you in the theater. <laughs> yeah. I waved. I waved. <laughs> didn't know you yet but we waved anyway <laughs> you understand my friend I, I knew no but like that but that's a movie that's totally teenage you know what i mean like it's vibed out for exactly the right, right. and like because of that old fucks like me are like i love this you know what i mean yeah. like, this is like this is great anyway i see i see that you're ready to move on from the titans from titans oh no i was about to derail us even more mm. and i don't want to i love it because i want to talk about like the lack of good teenage movies anymore like slacker films i think that was just one era like that wasn't like a something that was a, a time-honored thing but like the movies where it's like about one shift at a store and it's like yeah. man work sucks let's have a the empire records it's an empire right. Records. empire or, records or clerks right. yeah um if you can get uh, what's that one with Frank it? Whaley and Jennifer Connelly where they get locked in a Target? Uh, uh, um, career opportunities. Career opportunities. Uh, yeah. Because of the Clash cut. song. That's a and it gets, deep cut. It, they're in a Target that gets robbed, that right? That gets robbed, yeah. yeah. I mean, the entire, the entire genre of high school anything is basically restricted to Netflix specials now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They yeah, have yeah. a few. They, like, they have some stuff right now that's like in that zone. But it's, like no, there is no never any, been like, kissed or like anything like that. That doesn't fucking exist anymore. Are there no, like she's stoner all that. comedies anymore or like that? Yeah, they just party? they just they just made one. Okay, with, uh, good. Adam Devine and all the. We're okay, waiting good. for you, Dave. We're I'm, waiting I'm, for your script. I'm Game scared over, of the man. Thirteen Reasons stuff where it's all like like it seems like it sucks to be a teenager right now because there's so many. I haven't things. I haven't seen Thirteen Reasons Why, but that the the premise of that show angers me. <laughs> yeah, it sounds fucking crazy. <laughs> it really it's, does. That's one it's of like, let's, let's 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 spend a season justifying a girl's suicide. This is my assumption. It's one of those. Things, I haven't seen it. Yeah, I so. haven't seen it either. But it's like. One of those things where it's like there must be more to it. Yeah. Like if someone just told me there was a comedy where Robert Downey Jr. was in blackface, I'd be like, well, that can't be a thing, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, that shouldn't that, be. That shouldn't exist. And then you watch and you're like, okay, I see what they did. Right. It's that. I see how on, it isn't what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah. On paper, yeah. It, it's that 13 Reasons Why sounds insane, but it's got it's there's got to be more to it, right? I assume so. I'm not going to find out. Uh, you're going to look at me one day and you're like, now I have to tell you about it and I'll <laughs> listen for five minutes. <laughs> And then I'll be mad. Like should, that's that's the future. We should move on. We probably. should talk about the Clone Wars. I don't care about the Clone Wars. Um, I liked though. 
I haven't watched this version. I watched the original yeah. Clone Wars cartoon that was done by the Samurai Jack people. Um, and Did I really like it. I liked that one, yeah, but it's yeah. not. It's like they wiped it away. It's not canon anymore. So this new show, this is the canon. Oh, is wait. the canon? They did. I remember that show. Didn't they do another show after that? Or am I? They might have. Like another CGI show. Uh, Rebels, I think, is the okay. other one. That's fucked I don't... up. They wiped it out because that was really good. I liked that one. Yeah. Apparently, this one is good too. I just haven't watched it. Yeah. So like the story beat at the end, where like. Anakin's apprentice turns around. I'm like, I don't know those was. characters. Yeah, I don't yeah. know who that was. Um, I understand this is supposed to be a big moment, but I don't know. I did like the opening where they showed the clone helmets turning into the stormtrooper helmets. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. Okay. Well, you felt differently than I did because when I watched this trailer, I was like, I, don't, I need so much more than this mm. to want to see this. Like, it, it was so little information well, about it what was, I'm going to watch. It's yeah. Not, it was another trailer that required you to have knowledge of which what. Which I do. Yeah, in this case, I do. You've watched I, the show? Oh, no, no. I know what. I've watched all the Star Wars movies, and I've read the novels. Like, no, I'm, I'm up to date on this the shit. The Clone Wars were definitely not. Like, I was seeing all these comments of people like, man, this is how I got into Star Wars and stuff. The Clone Wars was like a kid's show. I've heard that. I haven't seen so it. So, it, it, yeah, I've seen a few episodes, and it, it handled a lot of stuff. That I think is really interesting. Like it handled the stuff where, like, the execute order sixty six moment, mm -hmm. which I, I, which we've, I, like, I actually wrote about it cracked because the idea is the stormtroopers are like, like, just a lot of guys, clones, right, who for a while are just fighting this war. So they're they like one of them in the Clone Wars show, like, it's a family, like they they sort of are all everywhere, and then suddenly they all get reprogrammed at once. Like that's insane. Like that's gonna affect a lot of things. That's suddenly. a cool and moment. It's a, and yeah, and I heard that the the show handled that and stuff like that. So like, it sounds like it's extended this period of time in the Star Wars canon that people don't think about and made a really interesting thing out of it. I'm sure um, that's true. I have no doubt there are twists and turns that are narratively interesting and enrich the story of the Clone Wars. It's also I thought what we were going to get when we got the prequels, like way back when, when the prequels oh, first yeah, came out, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. Clone Wars, that's what this yeah. is going to be, and it's going to be rad. We didn't get it. Now I'm watching it, and this trailer, to me, suggests you're going to watch it because it's Star Wars and because that's enough. Right. And uh, I feel like that's that shouldn't be enough. Right? Yeah. They should do well, better. I just think it's a it's a, it's a different group of fans like i'm not gonna watch it i feel no obligation you're not gonna to watch, watch it. it no because it's sort of a kid's show like and and i'm sure it's very again i'm pretty sure it's very good but like it's just it's not for my age i don't think well that's my i mean okay so again and i'm i'm not trying to be a naysayer about all these things because i think look we're in a, a world where we're gonna get a star wars movie every 10 minutes like that's yeah, gonna happen that's, and that's, that's that's fine that's the world we live in i now. don't hate star wars that much like i'm not like violently against it i loved mm. the movies when i was a child right yeah so this is a big section of that story that already exists that has meaning to every piece like every single person who cares about star wars has opinions about what the clone wars mean mm -hmm. or you know what i mean if they're real fans right. yeah so it's strange for it to be relegated to a show that you don't feel beholden to watch. Well, I just, I, right? I, I guess I just think, um, well, I'm not a, like, I don't care. Like, I don't, I don't need to know about the Clone Wars. But I would argue that's a but failure of to, this idea. That's no, I, I think idea. it's, it's, it's like when Ghostbusters had a cartoon, I'm sure adults fans of Ghostbusters weren't like, man, I got to complete the canon and watch the cartoon. Because that like, cartoon I just think of it as didn't bridge the gap of narrative that you were supposedly invested in having right. watched that cartoon dave i this, watched it it I didn't matter it. for yeah. the, of course you watched of course it. i have the dvd because i was well, I'm a, i was saying adults at the time like right, my right, parents right. who like ghostbusters right. weren't watching it with me but it was meant to be episodic and inconsequential yeah. and, that, and that was the bargain yeah, this is this is not narrative. that yeah. yeah yeah am i i mean am i being too hard on this tell me that i'm being a dick like because i know i, I kind of yeah i kind of wish it was i don't know i wish Clone Wars was more like a more like like a Marvel Netflix show. Yeah, instead of Solo, couldn't I have had this? I don't know. I I don't know. See, I, I, I just see, I don't think, even like let the kids have this. Sure, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, like care. sure. This is a kids show and they also a, have they, they also have, have uh, Rebels, fans. Star Wars Rebels. Yeah, this is them this is them scooping up fans at their very youngest. Yeah, Star and Wars. I don't mind that. This is them being like, well, not everybody's parents is a Star Wars fan, so we better get these yeah. kids, like, every way we can. You know what's interesting to me about that is that I feel like 
kids are where they should be doing their most creative ideas to get new. Like that's where right. the promise of the Star Wars universe, where like for instance, my you know stormtrooper hard boiled detective story. Sure, that's where the kids should get that. Right, that's like who you should give that to because they're going to be more open minded about what they're getting I from Star if, Wars than we yeah. are. Yeah, and they're not doing that. And well, I don't understand it. I'm wondering if the Clone Wars that show is like secretly that or like really creative. I mean, I haven't I seen hope it. So. But Liz, wouldn't I, it be I, amazing if that's where the real good Star Wars stuff is coming from right now? I think now? it is. Couldn't yeah. it be? According to every fan that I've talked to about Clone Wars, uh, it is. Oh, that. wow. <laughs> that's a real shame. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, this is just the only platform I have for this. Can we get Grand Admiral Thrawn to be canon somewhere? You know who I'm talking about? That character from the novels? No. Oh my! All right, I'm gonna waste our. I'm not gonna waste our time with this shit. Uh, he's. I read the novels when I was 13. Mm -hmm. Still care about him. Mm -hmm. Timothy Zahn was the author. Sure, loved it. Uh, they had a villain named Grand Admiral Thrawn. Get his ass in the canon immediately. Get it done. <laughs> Get him in there. Get it done. Stop making cartoons that should be for me. Get this all done. <laughs> Get it all done, Do this everybody. All for me. <laughs> You want entitled fans? This is what that means. Yeah. You get a monster like me on the other end of a you microphone. You get a goddamn goblin shouting into a microphone in an apartment. I am floating with pumpkin bombs right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. So it sounds like you guys don't care that much about Star I'm Wars. I'm just... Well, not that much. I didn't grow... Like, Star Wars I actually came late to. I have not... Like, I'm not as furious about... I understand that the new films are like... It's kind of all dumb. And what they're doing is kind of dumb. Like... Yeah in principle but like i'm not as personally invested in it um because i never really grew up with star wars um i did but uh disney uh, having a star wars every year really stopped really made me just kind of stop caring about star wars yeah. Yeah. very quickly Immediately. yeah <laughs> yeah they're not special anymore. yeah so it's just uh, it's, and i and i've seen watching like episode seven and eight i was just like okay these are these are just these aren't for me yeah so i just i kind of just don't it star wars isn't even on my radar They're really anymore a very bad job of it going anywhere like agreed when you when they made like how many eight nine seven harry potter films the reason people stuck it out for that long is from the very beginning they're like Voldemort. I'm so, I know I'm not this, supposed to say this is it, where this is going yeah, yeah, yeah like it's 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 like it's this really is where daring. it's going this is him this is where we're yeah. This is where we're heading, and it's every the same, it, ep, every movie was like getting us there. And it's sort of the same with the original trilogy, where like there's the emperor there looming over it the whole time. Um, this there's not really that, and some would argue with like, oh, Ryan Johnson killed him. That's why. But like Snoke, no Johnson's one gave a fault. shit about no. Snoke, and it it wasn't even that. It was the set. It was such a generic. Like yes, we're ruling the galaxy again. It's like who fucking cares. Can, can I? Like posit there was just nothing to hook me in the first movie to make me think like, oh, I have to see where this goes. Right. Yeah. Game of Thrones is the same thing. Like people are sticking that out because it's like you because there's one narrative. We know where it's going. Yeah. Right? Well, and we really know where yeah, it's going. And, now. And, and that's the thing is that's if movies are going to be like TV shows and make a million of them in a franchise, they really need something. They need a Thanos. Like that's what Marvel. Um, road when it was great like I disagree with this so really? like yeah I do I'll tell you why so because I, I think you're going to care about this okay. so you you just raised up Harry Potter as the uh, <laughs> as, as the monolith of how to do this <laughs> correctly <me> yeah <laughs> and I'm going to Avada Kedavra that fucking idea right Ooh. now bro uh, they just did a sequel that was a prequel right the magical beasts and where to find them right yeah and it didn't and do as good no and they're going to keep making those, and they're going to be exactly the same. Why? Because they don't make sequels that in any way are attempting to create new things to care about. That's the problem. They do they they do this sort of cyclical thing that I'll call the Legend of Zelda problem, right? Every Legend of Zelda game right. has the same fucking story. Yeah. So it's always you starting from scratch. You're going to get all this shit, and you're going to fight Ganon every right. single time. And that's what the movies are beholden to, is like... We're going to keep creating these same cycles that are close enough in relation to the original story that you're going to care about it, but that doesn't work. So now your suggestion is, well, then instead bring this one big fucking TNT that's like a bigger monster that blows it all up like Thanos. No, no, no. The solution is take the universe. Think of it as a setting. It's just a setting. It's a place where things happen. And ask yourself, what other stories are there in it? 
What other things could right, there that's be? The, oh, oh, that's the stated goal of well, But they don't do it. Absolutely. They're not, absolutely. Doing they're it, not yeah. going to do standalone films. You, they could do another whole trilogy but that isn't this. I think they would, if you're doing a trilogy, I think you need to be building to something, ideally. I mean, sure. Indiana Jones pulled it off. I would say, actually, The Dark Knight pulled it off where it's kind of Well, Indiana episodic. Jones wasn't written to be a trilogy, they just sort of they made one and like hey that did let's make another one hey let's make another yeah, one that's the third one are yeah. nowhere near no that's what I was saying they pulled it off where they're right. just like a series of adventures yeah but then when you're making like ten movies when we're getting into that territory but it's strange to me that like okay so we live in an era where a lot of ideas are recycled right where we're we're being fed sort of corporate ideas all the time mm-hmm. why don't they for instance think of things like this where it's like it's going to be Star Wars but it's going to be a time travel movie like Back to the Future but in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, you just fucking raised your eyebrows like, that's not a bad idea. I know. It's so easy to do this. It's so easy to think of this stuff. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And they don't do it. No, they, they're they trying to be very safe it's, about it. It's but that is risk, not. Risk that's aversion. also safe, and we haven't done it yet. Yeah. It's also a safe idea. It's things we already like. It's just like, just put them together. Just smush them together. Fucking Jaws, but in Star Wars. Do right. fucking Jaws and Star Wars. Do it. No, I, like legit, like someone you hunting like a that. space monster. Yes. Like Doesn't just a, cool? a hunting a space monster movie in Star Wars. Like Boba Fett hunting a space monster. Sure, you can make him Boba Fett. Yeah, why, why not? not? That would be great. If they, it was just like the Boba Fett story and it was just him. Just like, him? Like, I'm going to kill the space monster. Yeah. What if he doesn't survive? Yeah. He's worth a lot to me. <laughs> and then at the end you find out that the space monster is like evolves into be a sarlacc um pit like or something where like they're related or something but they're the related. same similar species this took strange turns so you realize like oh that's the thing that's eventually this is gonna, a real yarn that's the species that's eventually gonna kill him <laughs> well, right, what's, we're what's happening right now is that dave is breaking his screenplay he yeah, just right. found the second act right. and now he's gonna he's that latched on right now no but uh, that's how you connect it to like boba fett's story and why but it's you important. don't have you don't have to, to. it could you just be i know to. i know it could just be a job he does post credits it's like a post credits no dave it's this shit that you're doing you find out it's like part sarlacc right you're like you're 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 doing the thing that you're arguing against right you're like, well, don't do this thing where you're beholding the old movies, and then you immediately were like, but, uh, no, no, but keep I'm not, me safe. I'm not saying like you're, me, please. you're creating a Sarlacc pit cinematic universe. I'm saying like add a little <laughs> Easter egg. Like you were gonna we're add gonna, a little Easter egg. I'm a gonna move like, us on. Oh, okay, I'm gonna move us on. Night flyers. We could do see, this for a long I see time. That, I see that glint in your eye that you want to keep. You want to keep doing this. Troll I actually, well, I wanted, I wanted to him to do it. It really was making me happy. I was like excited about where this shit was going. That's okay. I do want to talk about Night Fly- Flyers, which is George R. R. Martin's sci-fi yeah. slash horror You series. had some Groucho things to say in the comments, and I looked at it, I was like, this is the best thing on the roster this uh, week, my God, I thought. I was watching it, and it's uh, my it's, only impression yeah. was like, where are the lights? Why aren't anybody turning on the lights? Um, I mean, we live in a world where moody lighting is everything. Yeah. Everything's moody lighting. But like... Like even even Alien, the first Alien, like it's bright. The ship and is bright. The, the ship refinery is, bright. is dark. I was about to say, and then they go into the section. Like yep. it becomes Not really. a, it becomes a horror movie. But like in this, it's like people like walking around their quarters and stuff, and it's like, aren't you bumping into shit? Like it's just pitch black. It's the not whole, pitch, the whole you trailer. You are really overselling this. People, the lights are off. The lights I'll are off. I'll give it that. Sure. <laughs> like, sometimes. But like it's it does just seem like interstellar and then they're on the event horizon in Interstellar. Yeah, it seemed cool to me. I, I, I'm not. I really I'm not. Uh, I'm fine. not opposed to it. No, I'm not opposed to it. I'm. I'm actually kind of excited for it. It's just. It's it's that thing with horror movies where it's like make me scared of, the light. Like anybody can make it dark and scary, but it's like bafflingly but dark on this me? spaceship. Yeah, yeah. It really, still me. It's yeah. like just bafflingly dark on a spaceship. Like it's 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 it looks like they're in a horror. Movie. You, you want you want them to poltergeist too. It's definitely. It's the same with like good. I mean, good movies have done this. Like Event Horizon. I love Event Horizon, but you look at that ship and you're like. This was made for a horror movie. Like yeah. the person who made the ship was like, I want it to look like an old church. And it's right. like, okay, sure. I like, want the ship to be mean. Yeah. Do you understand yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Make it a mean Make ship. Make it a mean ship. Yeah. And you know that was a direction that was given. Oh, yeah. I agree with that. I mean, like, have you ever played Dead Space? Have you ever played that game? No. Oh, yeah. Space? Oh, yeah. This yeah. felt like it was beholden to that a little bit. Like, Dead Space is like, I mean, it's not 80s like that was, but Dead Space, everything was fucking blacked out everywhere. Yeah. And this was in that zone. Right. Yeah. The, the, sh- the ship in Dead Space is 
does actually look like a really? old cathedral. It's fucking no, horrifying. Like, by the way, it's the, really cool. The yeah. DVD, the making of Event Horizon. This, I think, the set's designer director does say that he was like, "I wanted it to be a haunted house in space, so we made." Yeah, it yeah like it's the a, Shining. Yeah, a haunted house. Like that <laughs> was actually there. Three different yeah. ways. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I uh, let me ask you this question, Dave and Tom. Yeah, when you see Sci-Fi, the channel next to a next to a show, what does that mean to you? Probably not going to watch it. Um, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't mean what it used to mean to me. I agree with that. What it used to mean to me was this is going to be bad. Yeah. Yes. Now, cause I know like the expanse is a show that people enjoy and that's on sci-fi. I think is like the magicians on sci-fi. They make, yeah. they still make garbage. I, I know like, they make, the other they still I make saw, Sharknado. I, yes. I've seen shark movies that. I could not have gotten away with delivering to crack. I'd have been fired if I delivered that at cracked. There was an article really bad. a while ago that came out about the behind the scenes stuff at sci fi and they yeah. made a push at a certain like Sharknado level. They were like, Okay, we need to stop doing this. Like well, there was those, a- those are actually that's a it's asylum that does it, right? right. Those movies and then sci fi just distributes them, yeah. I, I think. Would, I would say no channel is incapable of delivering right. like, I don't, I'm, a good thing. I've reached the point where point, I'm yeah. I've reached the point where I'm no longer skeptical of a show being on like a network. Yeah, because it, cool. it just doesn't kind of doesn't yeah, matter. I remember anymore. when AMC that's cool about was our just time. playing? Yeah, yeah, AMC yeah. was just playing movies for a while. I do remember that, and day. then they had a hit show that, um, and then Mad Men, Mad Men. The, yeah, and then Mad Men, and then Breaking Bad. You went Blake for a while, and then there. well, I was I was thinking of Breaking Bad, and then you said Mad Men. I was like, oh yeah, Mad Men. Um, that's the one. That's that, the that one. was the first one, right? Yeah, and then Breaking Bad, Bad yeah. and then. And then Walking Dead, and I think in a few years they'll be back to just playing movies after Walking Dead. They'll be back to playing all the Jaws movies. Yeah. They'll be showing videoed versions of this podcast. Yeah. So yes. That's, that's our future, friends. Right, yeah. Um, the Talking Dead. <laughs> uh, yeah. I agree with you that we're past the point where a network means a thing. Right. That's good, though. That's a good thing so, about yeah. this time. That, that said, I really like. if, if this just had sci-fi on it, I wouldn't watch it. Yeah, it's the George R. R. Martin that I'm like, okay, I got it. I want to, I want to see what right. that makes I want to see what it is. Less want to watch it. Really? This, yes, I'll tell you why. Uh, I knew you're going to say that. It's because finish the books, George R. R. Martin. I don't want him to do <laughs> another know. thing. Finish don't, the first don't, fucking thing. Don't Robert Jordan us, you piece there's of shit. A, there's what? a fan theory Stop that I really this. <laughs> this man needs to be stopped. Sci-Fi had an obligation to all of us to be like, you know what, man? We like your show. We like your show idea. We're going to hold on to it. And we're going to give it back to you when you finish the motherfucking books. <laughs> There's just a fan them. theory I really like that he's finished the books and he's just been fucking with everybody. No chance. No chance. No chance. Well, yeah, I, you know, I also with how much money is George R. R. Martin's there? name in it. I kind of take that back only because there was that show with Guillermo del Toro's name attached. There's the strain. A show yeah. with Scorsese's name attached, and yes. mo- it only means like they produced it and maybe directed an episode. They directed the pilot, usually. and so uh, like I don't. I try not to. Let those names draw me to a show. Uh, Ridley, Ridley Scott produced The Terror, and I really liked The Terror. I need to see The Terror. It's yeah. pretty good. Did you like it after the first episode? I did, but I was a fan of the book. So, Because often what happens is they get a big talent like David Fincher for House of Cards. Right. David Fincher, I think he was EP, created the yeah, show. Yeah, he was also a little more involved. He directed a good amount of episodes. The first season. Yeah. Okay, then after yeah. that, I don't think he was involved. Part and then of, we he were did talking Mind about Hunter as well, right? And that's he him. did he did two or three episodes of that. And I, we were talking about this, right? That's like a financial thing. Yeah. So it's I'm like sure they it saves. Him. Yeah. It, it or or it like helps sell the project where it's like yeah I'll produce it I'll also direct some. Well, it also, also looks fucking awesome. Yeah. Was, it definitely sets a tone, right? Like that is the benefit is that a director comes in directs the first episode and then it's just like okay make them all look like that. I and want I'm them. Leaving. I want them to be like from George R. R. Martin, the person behind Game of Thrones and Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. <laughs> Was he behind Beauty and the Beast? Mm-hmm. The Ron the, Perlman show. Yeah, man, I'm getting really angry. Him and yeah. Li- him and Linda Hamilton. But that's so angry. the thing is. That is, man. I'm I'm now talking right myself. Time. Can I just out of this show? Can I just more? really quick? Ron Perlman. I feel like Tom Waits should do it. Should have gotten every part that Ron Perlman got. They need to do a film just together. Give them all to Tom Waits. <laughs> mm. Every single. No, don't don't give me that face. Tom I'm Waits right is Hellboy. This. Yeah. Have you? How much Tom Waits have you listened to? I mean, there's some. That's a lot. That was a real high pitched voice. Yeah. That was a. There was like lies all over that. 
<laughs> there was no yeah, truth. No, I, I, it's more that I, I like Ron right Perlman. Yeah, it's more that I, I like I Ron, Ron I, Perlman. I've listened to a lot of albums. Didn't he do his coffee and cigarettes with him and Iggy Pop? Just and it was on, delightful. That was so good. It was really how good. they can't like smoke and drink because they're old, but then they uh, smoke and drink. You know, I, uh, it was quit so, so fucking I can have good. One every once in a while. It was so fucking good. <laughs> Perfect Tom Waits. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a very good Tom Waits. Uh, I sold it with. I put some glee on that. You did. So you you sold it with the glee. Yeah, yeah, you guys missed the glee. Yeah, I but it was like Tom Waits. It's like Adam disappeared, and then Tom Waits <laughs> was suddenly in the room. Go loud. <laughs> yeah, I can't really do it. Uh, I, I shouldn't even try. Anyway, I, I got us way derailed here. Right, right. I. But I, sorry, just going back to the name George R. R. Martin. I realize that means nothing when it comes to the look or the writing of a TV show. Like. It's sort of silly where it's like this guy who writes books. Now we're going to see the show that he may may have written. Did he write it? Do we know anything? I about mean, it's that? not I don't think it's that insane. Like if you no. saw like a TV show that was like Stephen King created it or like John Grisham. Right? But you, like you'd be like, oh, you, mm-hmm. so you say it's like if Stephen King decided to direct um, that means it's bad. I, I know. <laughs> right? what, I know. Oh yeah. Not not bad. if it means not if he directs, but I'm saying if like a, a show came out yeah, and it was yeah, like created was like, by Stephen King, I'd be like, oh, I'd watch that. Yeah, you I know, guess. at least the first episode. George R. R. Martin. It's just that thing where like he his credentials hasn't shown. Like he's he's done one book series that he hasn't completed. Um, that just it feel like it, like you said he should finish the books. It sort of feels like he's he's running on credentials that he doesn't quite he hasn't quite earned yet he's, it's like you haven't even finished a series he's that guy who like bought a gold mine they found one vein of gold in it he he went back to the old town and just bought everything right, right. on credit he's just living on credit right. the rest yeah. of his life you know just like playing the craps tables you know like ordering whatever right spice of sex up, he wants. yeah he's that guy yep. uh he's in the summer of george right now <laughs> sure sure uh, I will say though that I did think this project looked cool. I did like the way it looked. I'll watch it. I'm gonna. I might watch it too. There's a chance. I'll give it. I'll give it a shot for sure. Yeah. I just. I didn't. Um, I don't know. I think there's certain authors like Stephen King. It's too cryptic right now. I, sure. the, oh, it also had the cliche. I, I. It's a new. It's a newish cliche, but it's been around for a while. I just. It's newish to me. I just noticed it, which is person like hanging out with their child or doing some delightful right. thing and then snap it's a memory and they're in somewhere dark sure. like it does it opens with that so like i guess there's just there's nothing in this trailer that was like i've haven't seen that before it like it all felt like it is pretty derivative yeah it it felt very sure. derivative i mean but i like horror in space yeah me too well, which that's is why a, i'll try it but i also there's only two genres we do in space guys we only do horror and, horror adventure. and adventure we don't and do musicals what musicals? I don't know. Space? We should do musicals. In space. God damn it, Dave! With your you excellent ideas, um, it uh, stow that in the vault, Dave. We'll yeah. work on it later. We should move on. Okay, we're about fifty minutes in. Right. Right. Five zero. That's it. <laughs> oh well, Rise. I I got way more to say. Uh, 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 let's move on. Rise, <laughs> Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles. Sure. Yeah. Oh, you guys liked this. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I'm fine with it. Uh, okay, here's my only objection I'm not going to watch it. it. It's an old man objection. Sure. I acknowledge it. I'm old. Sure. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I didn't actually understand what I was looking at, uh, like in that, terms of yeah, scale I and space. S- yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, I know that kids are just smarter than me, and they're going to not have this problem, so it's right. not a real objection. I found the fighting interesting because I thought this sort of the same thing. Where I was like, this fighting is fucking crazy. Yeah. It doesn't really look like fighting. And then I thought like... Well, why would I want like realistic fighting in a kid's mm-hmm. show? Like this is cool looking. So it is cool looking. I agree. I think kids will enjoy it. It's got a lot of bright colors. I like, I the, the, I like the, all the turtle redesigns. Yeah. I like that the turtle. One of the turtles had a different body than the other turtles. Thraff, yeah, yeah, I like he's that. Fucking swole. Yeah, I mean he's cool but rude as as I recall. Uh, yeah, he is. I don't know if that's still true in this new reboot. Um, I think we've 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 touched on ever since the first film. It's swole, angry Raph. Yeah. Mm. Right. He's definitely he's gotten less cool and more rude. Like he's That's definitely fine. right. He doesn't Although, keep his cool. I will also. He's I would say that he, he's that would be for the live action movie too. Like he's sarcastic and he's like uh, he's funny, but he's an asshole in that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. I mean, they got to have one unlikable turtle. Right. They can't all be likable. Yeah, right. 
there's got to be a grumpy if there's dwarves. Right. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's got to be one yeah. son of a bitch. There's got to be one asshole. Right, because that's how people are. You're going to find one. Right. There's going to be an asshole in that flock of people, you know? Uh, here's my only other objection to it. Uh, this is called Rise of the I Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I assume it's a prequel? It clearly is an origin story. Hmm. They seem to find supernaturally powered weapons. That are they use then to fight here's whatever my, their ho- warthog adversary is. Here's Bebop? my thought: is they were maybe they were holding regular versions of those weapons right. in that shot. I think that's just like a bit in one of the episodes. That's Dave, what I was assuming. Dave, that's the only thing that says "Rise of" about this story is that they find these supernatural weapons. Oh right, it just looks like the Ninja Turtles still. Right, Correct. yeah. So that's what's confusing to me about it is is this an origin story to the Ninja Turtles because if so, where's the sewer part? Maybe and the mutagen. Like, maybe is that all not happening? It's a puberty story. And right, it's, it's a coming of age and it's talking about their boners. Their boners. Yes. We have had a lot of Teenage Ninja Turtle boner talk yeah. in the Michael Bay films at least. Yeah. Oh. Well, I'm sorry to have missed that question mark. Mm-hmm. I don't I, I don't care about that really. Uh they went back to the comics April O'Neil, right? That is April O'Neil and mm-hmm. Yeah. Sort of. In the in the comics she works for Baxter Baxter Stock. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think in th- I think from yeah, I I, th- I think in this show she's like a teenager? Like okay. she might be the same age as them. Are they trying to remove the possibility of her being a love interest? I think so. Heightening? Yeah. Well, that heightens it, right? Well, yeah, that, they're well, all that heightens it. Yeah, but they, she's never really been. There's the thing is, f- uh, I'm, a love I'm, interest for the turtles. She's more of like she was more like their babysitter. She's a reporter that they kind yeah. of wanted in the original, to fuck. right? Right. Um, I I kind of want her to not be a teenager, only because one of my favorite things is like the idea that she's having to deal with teenagers yeah right like, having to deal with these yeah. assholes <laughs> like they're mutant turtles but there's also the fact that they're teenagers i liked that about secret of the ooze that they were like having to stay at her apartment and that sucks and not because real, they're turtles it was a really but because convenience. They're teenagers. which which that's the second one second one wait but okay i'm sorry second of the michael bay movies no no, no. second of the original this is Jim the one with go ones. ninja go yeah yeah with um vanilla, vanilla ice. ice i didn't realize that that was in her apartment it's just been such a long oh, time yeah. yeah they stay in her apartment for the first half and then they go and until they what's the name the pizza guy Bernie Ray's Jr. Her, her apartment. I like only remember one fact from the original Ninja Turtle movies, and that is that Shredder was already a fully formed villain, and that he recruited the Foot Clan from skaters. Yes, like that's my oh, favorite thing. He's yeah, Fagin. The first. Yeah. He's just getting first, wayward street teens to rob for. Loved him. it. The Love first that cracked move. video I proposed was the idea of some yeah. guy oh, yes. yeah. who. There's a scene where Shredder comfort, like they show them all hanging out and like having yeah. fun. We and should show this comes sketch, in. by the way. Yeah, Shredder comes in and like starts talking and goes like, "You, we are a family. I am your father and stuff." And I wanted the one guy who is his first day next to his friend. Like, did you bring me to a cult? Like, just sitting there, like smoking well, a cigarette. Yeah, just like what? Is-? And then he's just like, "We must get these turtles." And it's just, like, imagine day one being in there, like, "Oh, okay, I need to get out of here right now." <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> That is a man. I just Dressed wanted to smoke mirror. cigarettes. I was, smoking smoking skate right. Yeah, right. I was smoking cigarettes and playing Narc a yeah. second ago, and right. now this guy in a I fucking just... suit of armor. <laughs> I just was really trying to indie nose bone into this pool, and that all got stopped by this guy that looks like a cheese grater. Yeah. Right. I don't know what the fuck is going on oh, here. Oh, it's crazy. Then yeah. a samurai comes in and starts talking about... <laughs> family and, and know, these turtles we need to kill they're like a yeah. person of that audience who are like stoned in there too who are just losing their sure. fucking minds man shredder's great Shre- I, that, I, that that would be the only, my only complaint hilarious. that would be my only complaint about this uh trailer so there's where's shredder yeah maybe it's the rise of the shredder maybe they're waiting yeah maybe or, they, they need to stop trailer. waiting i'm yeah. tired of that just throw shredder right it, in there you can't yeah. have batman without the joker yeah you can't have ninja turtles without shredder yeah i think even brain and his bizarre suit Crank. is Crank, Crank. Yeah. i think yeah even sorry wow it's fine. i think even he is re- is removable you can get rid of him and still have a ninja turtles you must have shredder <laughs> you that is shredder. like not a fucking oh, yeah. you need, I, I think you need shredder and bebop and rocksteady Oh yeah, man! I like the warthog and the oh, and, and the, the rhino. And the rhino. I like those guys. Yeah. yeah, I like those guys. I like they're good guys. I like those guys. Those are good I, guys. I kind of, <laughs> I kind of also missed that they didn't make each of the Ninja Turtles have different colors, like tone of skin. Oh, they did that in this. 
Uh, may, okay, so see, it was going so fast, maybe I didn't see it. Yeah, they did, it, it, it has the same tone as the original action figures Which did. is my favorite thing. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, that they yeah. did not do in the original cartoons. And no, I, they were all the same green. Uh, it was like, fuck you. The original cartoons, I have <laughs> a lot of nostalgia. the only color green we have. Yeah. I have a lot of nostalgia for the original cartoons, but I have gone back and watched it. And They're it's garbage. like, yeah, it's bad quality animation. It's yes. like, really, it's really bad. They're not as bad as He-Man. He-Man is is impossible right you watch he-man you're like he-man's How did terrible this get on television he, well he-man was the reason for those the um hearings government hearings about whether or not it was okay to have a show for children that all it did was just sell toys right i mean yeah it he was... managed that's why G, that's why gi joe had the the really tacked on the like the knowing is half the battle stuff and Love they would, it. They would come that. on at the end of the he-man and do the same thing because they it was for a while they reversed this obviously but like for a while you couldn't like they were like you have like your sharp your cartoon show has to have something of substance in it it can't just be a commercial right. for toys so like well we'll throw a moral in the end of it how's that like fine sell your toys <laughs> yeah. it just it just you know what it kind of heartens you to hear oh Entertainment has always been a slightly cynical oh, for uh, sure. spin cycle that is intended to sell us things, mm-hmm. even from our childhood on. So like now that we're conscious of it, yeah. woke to it, it's like, well, it's always. I, I still, I, I'll, um, I'll, I'll dis- disagree that I, th- I think the animation in Turtles is bad. I don't think the writing is bad. Like the, the writing's not bad. I yeah, think, I, I think I the show more did that some the animation. The animation is very bad. There's yeah. a yeah. lot of conversation about weird kinds of pizza, as I recall. Mm-hmm. Like, like that was the bit. But that they, you they, know they, they go, they go some crazy places in in that cartoon. Yeah, they ice cream and some... anchovy pizza. Yeah. Michelangelo scarf. That, that cartoon shit. definitely gave us the most, uh, the biggest array of villains, right? Yeah, or characters. I, th- I did think. It? Yeah. Oh, I think so. That's where most of them came from. Mm-hmm. I don't think they came from the the comic. No, no, no. Other they all came the from the show. The four we've talked about. Who else is a villain in Teenage Mutant Ninja? Or not just villain, but characters like Vern. Vern's not in. No, yeah, Vern's in the cartoon. Um, the the neutrinos. Is that the what they're called? Neutrinos. The cartoon. Fucking the, that rabbit. Yeah. Um, you you saw your Jimbo is a pre-existing character. Oh, okay. He's the from Technodrome actually is Holy from shit. the cartoon. Technodrome. Technodrome. Yeah. Krang's from the cartoon. Krang's yeah, the, from the cartoon. They, they, they were Rocksteady. They were aliens that looked like Krang in the comic, but. Yeah, Bebop and Rocksteady. Uh, You're blowing my mind. Slash. Right now. This is uh, this is blowing Leatherhead. My mind. Um, We've talked a lot. Basically, about the, everybody. The Laird Eastman comics being not good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not opinion. gonna say that. He's my neighbor. I'm like, yeah, there he was my neighbor. I'm not... I think every everything um, everything that we like about the turtles came from the cartoon. Yeah, and it, yeah. I do like the. This blows my mind. The yeah. the new the newish cartoon before this. Did a nod to the town Northampton, where I'm from. That's the town that Ninja Turtles was like the drawings, the original comics. A lot of the landmarks are from that town, which is cool. You got about one more comment about something related to Boston before I lose my. It's not Boston. Mind. It's in Western Massachusetts. Don't care. It's in close proximity. It's not, Dave. No, no, it's That's like enough. four hours away. <laughs> it's four all hours away, Boston. Sir. That whole state is Boston, Dave. Mm. I've had, I've had my. <laughs> That's like it. if I were calling here San Diego, like. Dave, no, it isn't. Or calling San Diego because this here. place is good. That's Boston. But I can't have that. I just can't have it's it. It's a bad place. <laughs> Boston's uh, delightful. Actually, no, I, I don't like Boston very much. I'm just kidding, Dave. All right, uh, no, that's it. I, I just hope the new one honors that as well. I like that they've been doing that. I don't know why they've been doing that. It's a weird detail to have in the cartoons. It's only for like me. Like, well, it's there. It's for only you. for people from Northampton who are like, hey, they mentioned my fucking hometown. That's pretty good. It's cool. It's that's pretty solid. It's pretty great. Dave. I'm gonna move us on to some. Sure, I'll pick. Well, I'll pick through some of these I new stories. To, oh, damn it! We had a good transition. The He-Man She-Ra thing. Did you hear about that? Oh yeah, yeah of course. The, the controversy. I don't. I think that. it's like three people on the internet, right? Right. But I never saw anybody actually being upset about. It. Oh, they should. Like, I've seen, I saw I've seen some, some tweets, like retweets yeah. and stuff. People, people being shitty. It, no. They're just mad, and my understanding is that they're angry because she's not she, sexual. She's not sexual. She looks like a teenage. What, girl. what we're what we're talking about is there's a new Shira cartoon coming out yeah. that's being made by a woman. Sure. Um, and the redesign of the character is not hypersexualized, and fucking bearded men on the internet are furious. 
I mean, speaking as a bearded man on the internet, right? Uh, can, can we can we get our shit together, guys? Can we just stop this shit? <laughs> Call the rest of them. I know you, you have just, all their numbers. Can you please? It's a real. I've been sending one. out memos. Yeah, it's real. Shira is not really and also, worth being upset about, right? Like, but it what also, do you care? It's also a great idea to keep doing is finding these like '90s female characters that were just like sexualized in these cartoons and then making the stuff just for them to actually appeal to young women like that's a good use that's a good reboot like that's sure, a good sure. way to reboot a character make, make any version you want and make it that like to me to me it's frustrating that anybody thinks that somebody's vision of what this character can be it has to correspond to a their appetites be their history with it mm-hmm. and see their sexualizations those are all dumb things yeah. yeah all of them don't matter that's why you get new artists to do new versions right of and i like that this woman right. wants to claim shira and make her have sort of her own identity that yeah. is probably fits more with in line with her worldview but even if she didn't even if she's like i'm gonna go it, to to the fucking moon with like hyper sexualized shira That'd be fine too. Like, like let her do what she wants to do with it, and see what it is. You know? Well, it's also like no one else is going to do anything with it. Right? Like, her, might as well have someone who has an idea about it that they're excited about. Yeah. Do it, and also, also like a lot of these guys. Like I'm looking at their avatars on Twitter and being like, "You didn't watch she Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no, they're, they, but they're just trying to pick. You fights. don't care, yeah. you fuck. I, it, but this is almost, it's almost two different conversations. Because yeah. I feel the same thing about the Friday Thirteenth game, where it was like. No one's doing anything with the property. And these guys came along and they're like, we're going to make a game out of this love that we have. And they were allowed to do it. And it was like, that's fucking great. Like, it's, it's, yeah, they should, I agree. if anybody ever comes to a, a, a studio or a creator, like, I, I'm just really passionate about this property you have that you haven't touched in years. And I have a good idea. And I have for a good it. idea, right. like, or a unique idea. Fucking let them do it. Let them do yeah. it. Watch it. Stop yeah. being a dick. Like, how can you possibly be bereft of things to masturbate to in 2018? Right. Like, never and, before. And on the internet. Right. What never is before your have we had such yeah. a bounty of things to masturbate this to. Is, yeah, this is the golden <laughs> Things era of to which to masturbate. Yeah. This, it can't get more, I don't think. No. I feel like we've hit critical our, mass on that. Our yeah. cup overfloweth. <laughs> cup of uh, <laughs> semen. Yep. Just, just God damn, just Dave. rancid <laughs> semen. He's <laughs> <laughs> ghoulish rancid semen yeah. from some troll yeah. on the internet. Yeah, it bubbles. You know, and, oh, yeah, it's like, a like the slime yeah. and Ghostbusters. Right. right. Yeah. yeah, it's like it looks like it looks like it has pop rocks. Right. Yeah. It, like it bubbles like a cauldron without any fire under it. Right. It's, it's, just... Just, it's just hideous. Yeah. All right, I'm moving us on. Uh, I don't know why? <laughs> I really Michael, don't know why. Michael Bay, we mentioned earlier. Uh, he's making yeah. an action movie for Netflix. 156 million is the budget for this. I thought, yeah, it is astounding. Do you know what it's about? No, no, because no one does. Yeah, I, there's, that's interesting. There's yeah. no, there's been no. It says all I all I could find was this article that says it's based on an interest, uh, an interesting, uh, an an original idea from the guys who I think the guys who wrote Deadpool. Right. Yeah. Sure. With Ryan Why Reynolds not? and Dave Frank. With Ryan Reynolds and Dave Frank. So I it's assume just... it's going to be like. I don't know. There's it's, nothing about it that says it's an instant train wreck. No, uh, there's nothing about it that's like I'm excited for it. Well, just, I, I'll, I'm, I'm honestly, I mean, he's a big piece of shit. I just got done calling him the most uh, mean spirited filmmaker, but I'm kind Bay. of, I'm kind of into watching a new Michael Bay action movie that's not like a Transformers movie. He, ma- of- he made one. Uh, he made one like two years ago that was like a. It had it had uh, Jim Krasinski in it. Oh, John, oh 13 13 hours, and it was not good. The I Benghazi it. one. Uh, yeah, Michael Bay's problem, to me, aside from the ones you guys will say, is that he doesn't know how to make anything in his movies have a different tone anymore. No, it's this one shotgun blast of a tone. Yeah, uh, it's madness. It is, but I do think he picked exactly the right star for what he does. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds is they- very good at at that. And yeah, like, I'm gonna nuance the shit out of this uh, one tone comedy piece. You yeah, know? he's good at that. I, sure, I have hopes for it. It does seem like a like I wouldn't want to hang out on the set of this movie. No, it's probably a no. nightmare. Yeah, um, you don't want to hang out on the set of any action movie. No, but it, like, that's not. A fun I have place nothing against Ryan Reynolds or Dave Franco, but I would. I sure. just don't want to hang out with them and Michael Bay. Um, that 
not that they're inviting me, but like it's, <laughs> that just sounds like a that just sounds like an annoying. Set. Dave's just sitting um, lonely at his home, watching the door, yeah. hoping that Bay Any moment, looking for the text, through, looking for the text um, from Bay. I go yeah. back and forth. Part of me is like, whenever he makes another Transformers, I'm like, well, at least they're keeping him over there doing that. You know, like he's not hurting any other properties, any other franchises. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I also agree where it's like the I like the Bad Boys movies. I like The Rock. I like The Rock. Yeah. I I I could use, but he's just I don't know if we're ever getting that back. That was that was back when he had ago. that was restraint. over twenty years ago. That's yeah, that's like, back that's when he like had saying, restraint. He doesn't have restraint anymore. Dude, so he makes pain years? and gain. Where you it's think like, The Rock was restrained for Michael Bay? That's Michael Bay restraint. That's there's a, true. There's yeah. a few things I still respect about Michael Bay. Um as a filmmaker one is that he he understands that he needs stunts and explosions in his movie yeah he'll blow if if he there's blows, a, something needs to blow up he'll blow yeah, a, a something which is up. incredible yeah. for a transformers film is they're still they're not made entirely in computers like he actually films practical locations all Didn't the time one of the recent transformers have the largest explosion yeah on he film does that it? to the point that he has he <laughs> I'm has just saying I, I, he has endangered stunt people oh yeah <laughs> well but, and, but that's that's I I should be incensed like you about that, but like that is a lot of directors who do action things, right? But have you seen the behind the scenes of specifically? No, I know he's a monster. I know he is. I know he encourages recklessness, of course. And and like, yeah, the first Transformers behind the scenes, they accidentally use a pneumatic catapult to launch a car into a occupied building at one point. Like it's stuff like that, and it's Michael Bay on set. Like, come on, let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. And it's just like. I right, fuck safety. Let's get the shot. Like it's a lot of that. Um, <laughs> it's like, oh, that's a crime. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, he's a maniac. You can't yeah, just throw a, a car at people. But again, the fact that he's still throwing cars and like making explosions and stuff is that's I like that. That's a man who I I would if there was some way to like put on a helmet on a human being and find out what's in their heart. <laughs> you know, like it just shows you, like it beams would, out of your head. I don't know if I'd want to know that. I do want to know. Opinion. I absolutely, I'm like, I'm fascinated. I just like need to know because like he's been doing this for 30 years. He's been doing these action movies and like the, he can't. 20 years, 20 years. Are you sure? 95 I think was yeah. Bad Boys, which okay, is so 23 first. years. How, what can possibly give him the action boner now? What could it be? Oh, he probably strangles people to death. Um, I mean, but like, like and, genocide. I, mean, I know yeah. we're all gonna. <laughs> yeah, I know genocide. we're all gonna say the most horrible thing for the sake of jokes. But like, I like, but you're describing a oh, man who I, still cares. Yeah, that's how can that be? That's the thing is he still loves just a fucking explosion, right? Because like, because um, Spielberg, who also had, I, I would argue, a, a little bit of an action boner early in his career, like. He has found ways to find different projects to keep himself interested. Right. Right. Or even like Oliver Stone or like a lot of these different directors, they find ways to explore different sides of their personality. Mm-hmm. They try things. Bay's like, I found the one thing. I'm from an art school. That is all he's got. I got blow ups. Yeah. I got so <laughs> many blow ups. I got more than you'll ever know. I, have- I would argue that perhaps he's not a very smart man and, and this is enough for him to be fulfilled. He, he's definitely smarter than you think he is. He, well, he's, he's definitely he's smarter than I think he smarter. is, but I think he's also, he's like right in the special area where like parts of his brain are dumb enough to like just enjoy explosions. He's, he's for us. And again, dumb. I'm not, yeah, I'm not saying explosions aren't awesome. I think if that's the thing is I, I worked at Universal Studios for a little bit and there was sure. every day I'd clock in, I would be at the back, like the behind the scenes of the Waterworld stunt show. Yeah. And so every day I went to work, there'd be an explosion when I came in. And that never got old because it's an so, explosion. So you have it too. I think everybody has you, it. Uh, I don't think I, think I, that's, I don't think that's I have why it. he got anth- people like Anthony Hopkins to be in his movies. He's like, I'm going to pay you a lot. Also, there'll be explosions. And he's like, okay, I'll do it. And you get to fight robots. And you get to fight robots. I think, and have a robot butler. I think you're very- He has a robot <laughs> butler. I it's think you're so really, good. really and his name underestimating is, the power sorry, of a paycheck. Sorry, I just remember, his name is like Cogsworth. Of course it is. And it's, it was the moment, sorry, I just watched the moment he's he turns around, he's like, says it for the first time, like, come Cogsworth. And it was just like, oh my fucking God, <laughs> I am on board in this 
awful movie. Uh, I've really got to move us along. Okay. You've really had to pull us along today. It yeah. seems like we just needed to do a three-hour podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we we can skip most of these. I just want I wanted to bring up the fact that skyscraper is bombing because this Hollywood Reporter article that I put in the doc for us to talk about they casually mention. That Legendary Pictures is owned by a Chinese media company that owns the most theaters in China. Yeah. So that's why like Warcraft made its money oh, yeah. back in China. Well, that, also, and that's uh, that's so that's legal there, which it's specifically not here. Oh, also shit. We I, I we wrote about this on Cracked is um they fake ticket sales. That's also part of how they do it. Oh wow. Yeah, they've been caught. They 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 found that some a reporter in China. It was, oh, I wish I remembered the movie. It was something stupid. It was like the Mummy, the Mummy remake or something like that. Tom Cruise right. one? Not, it's not that specifically, but it was something like that. They found that there were sold out showings listed for the same theater for showings five minutes apart, which just is impossible. Is impossible. Sure. And they were so- found that this was a regular pla- practice and stuff. And there was a whole scandal where they were like cooking and, the books. And maybe and they, were, they were inflating their numbers. And so it's very. I mean, it's it's a lot of. I think they're going through a lot of stuff we went through here, right? There was when studios own theaters here, right? They would like we not show that was rivals a problem. movies, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we eventually, which Netflix now wants to go back to, but like, yeah, I think it's that where like their their film industry is sort of still in a early stages. It so was just getting away with a lot of corruption. Yeah, it was dazzling to me just because it's a it's a it's a thing it's just casually mentioned yeah, in like the right. fourth paragraph of this well, article. They know we're not checking it out. But you know what I mean? Like they, yeah. they yeah. know other than other than the sleuthing eyes of Tom Ryman, nobody else read that article. I just happened yeah. to see that line. Right. I was like, wait, what? I, I I don't have as much hope as you do for it correcting itself given time. Oh I I don't uh, know if I have hope about that. Yeah because I that actually, I mean, like, I'm not trying to get all despondent, especially since we're probably over time. But like, I feel like uh, it's another example of like how many things are owned by how few people. Oh yeah. yeah. There's like, I and I just feel like a responsibility to like every time I see it, I'm gonna say it. Yeah. Because it's it's the biggest problem in the world right now. Mm-hmm. That like that kind of shit is happening because one guy or one family owns. Too much stuff. Right. This like, is also... That's insane. That shouldn't happen. It right. sucks for moviegoers. Yeah. Like sky, and... This Skyscraper is the name of the movie. Yeah. Skyscraper should fail. Not because The Rock sucks. He's the best. He's the people's champion. Raise an eyebrow for The Rock. Mm-hmm. Because it's not a good enough movie to do well. And, and now that's it's... why movies... That's The competition is what is required for us to get good movies. Yeah. Exactly. But it is failing. And well, this... but it's gonna get buoyed up by this shit. Possibly, is the yeah, theory. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right. a theory, yeah. Which oh, it, has it's, it's, it not? It's, has it, it not? It hasn't been... released in China. Yet. Okay, but here's they're the... banking on that being here's... the legendary pictures uh... thing. Is... That's why it's a problem. Also, if you're, it's, I don't think it's a problem that's gonna last though, because I I spent like a year reading the China stuff because I was really fascinated by it, and I kept keeping up because it was it's like the international stuff. The fact that everything's being made for China is making. You know, they're making these movies that are a bomb here and do well in China. Right. What's slowly happening, though, is as China was doing this more and more, I think it was Kung Fu Panda was the movie. There was this big upset in China where everybody was like, why isn't this a Chinese film? Well, why didn't we make Kung Fu Panda? It was, I don't know, it's something about the culture, something about that movie. Sure. People were like, this was a movie that should have be been ours. made. Yeah. And so the third Kung Fu Panda is a, it's a joint made with China and they're doing stuff like they changed the movie for China and stuff like that. Right. And what's been happening slowly is China, like the Great Wall movie and stuff, they started saying like, we should make our own movies. We should make our own movies. Duh. And there's going yeah. to be a point where America, which has been betting on making things not for us, is suddenly going to be turned away by China and going to have to figure out what to do about that. Right. Because eventually China is going to be like, no, sorry, you're competition. Like That's also in, in this article. They mentioned that. Yeah. Like in Sky's right. like we don't know if it, how well it's going to do because it's playing against these two Chinese movies that are huge. Like one of them is like a they sound massive cool, hit. Actually. They yeah, have yeah. 395 domestically in yeah, China. That's, that's a huge. lot of money. China yeah. at this that's point, huge they, here. they might have yeah. better movies than us. Um, Pro- probably not. But I don't, I don't know, because there are movies there that are like these huge hits that sure. are just, it's, uh, I guess not better, it's that thing of again, because audiences were also getting sick of the, we were pandering. It was stuff like the Transformers movie having, Marky Marks using a Chinese credit card in Texas in one scene. And it's like, 
well, that's obviously dumb. And and there's a lot of that where Chinese audiences were slowly, you know, not slowly, probably immediately figuring that out. So again, it's that of like, you know, why why not make your own films with they the should. culture there and the the stuff? You know, like I would like just... to watch them. I'd also like to point out that you just brought up that they're stuffing, they're 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 quote unquote uh, fixing the times, like so that they yeah. to to commit fraud. Yeah. I feel like if I added up all the time you claim to have spent researching things, there's there's some fraud in there somewhere. The time doesn't all add up. He spent a year, he said, reading <laughs> more the like Chinese months. theater. More like six months. There was a chunk. See how there the was, time no, changes? No, See how this audit immediately changes things? <laughs> Actually, I... I You're going to go back to a year? I might go back to a year. What I'm saying is that... <laughs> I was making uh, for not cracked, a year I, of continuous I mean, research. Crack, yeah, I was a researcher at Crack. That was my job. So I was following. I know. I just like the China shit. stuff. You really do like stirring up shit. It's yeah. really my job here. I feel it is. Yeah. I'm gonna move us along. <sighs> Dave, why don't you tell <laughs> just us a couple of babies? Today. Yeah. Why don't you tell us about yeah. a movie that deserves more? Money? I want to talk about Blood Machines. I knew you. I knew this was from Blood from the minute Machine. I read it. Blood Machines. It is a techno space opera. Now is it made a, by a like a musician? Um, is it, it no, says, no, he's a music video director. It's a short film. I think is it might right? be a short. Yeah, yeah. It says it's a short film in this write up, um, and that's the, okay. The I'm blood not machines is a short film? Yeah, it's based oh. off a music video, which you can see online at any point. I need to get in right now before you say more and say this music video is already in my top five music videos. Ever. <laughs> nice. It it's is called Turbo Killers. It's fucking splendid. Mm. It's splendid. It's so insane and over the top. It's so well done and yeah. excellent. I fucking loved it. I have one problem with it. Um, I'm, first I'm of all, people disagreeing with this. Google Turbo Killers, everybody. Sure. Yeah, everybody um, watch No, Turbo no, Killers. the problem with it is purely, it's very minor, but it, it's the fact that it's, it's like, um, it's hard to describe. It's great visual effects, really yeah. cool. They add a little that film grain on it. I liked that. The 16 See, mil I'm, thing. I'm sick of it because it was that thing where it's like Grindhouse, where like yeah, I think that fits. this trailer is like the VHS very look yeah. that was in Kung Fury. It's sure. it's that thing of like I don't need it anymore. It looks good. Like don't try to make it retro. Like, but I think it fits um, the genre thing. This is yeah. Like, this is this is like the Far Cry Blood Dragon thing. Yeah. yeah, this is that that it's, era again. It's a very minor issue. Um, I it's I really that's fucking that's some real good. nitpicking right there. Yeah, I don't, I don't, the movie itself, Blood Machines, doesn't look like it has that. No, it doesn't. It. No, the titles do, but oh, okay. Yeah, they're they're I sort of old school. I don't yeah. mind '70s titles because I think '70s titles are really cool. They are cool. Yeah, and like they don't need to just be '70s. You know, I it it actually hurt me a little to watch this music video because I was so jealous that a person got to make this. <laughs> I was like, my God, look how wonderful <laughs> this is all the way through. The song's not even good. The song sucks. Yeah. Don't don't care about it the song. It is a pile of audio garbage. This fucking video is just watch it on mute. It made me <laughs> it made me weep tears of joy. I it mean, really that, did. That giant Giant spaceship that looks like a cross. That was oh one of those God. things where it was like, why haven't we done this yet? Like a spaceship that looks like a big cross. That's I know like a lot. Can't... A lot of stuff in this movie is like, why haven't we done this? Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a few extra things that are new that are cool. Yeah. yeah, I don't know exactly what the villain of this music video is trying to do. It look, I would say the word feargasm. He's trying to create a feargasm mm. in that woman. Yeah, seems like successfully. In exactly the trapezoid from Gary yeah. Newman's cars, that music I, video. I couldn't tell <laughs> if he was so saving good. her or hurting no, her. No, he's well. Hurting. Okay, so I it has to be. Should we? Should you? Should we explain what the movie's about? The movie. Uh, this is the synopsis Definitely from Blood, don't care about this. <laughs> Bloodmachines.com. Yes, plot doesn't matter. That's very yes, clear. Definitely this don't is care. the worst thing to put on a podcast because it's almost entirely a visual thing. The reason we like this. Is because it, it looks, looks we're really cool. It, up. it looks, yeah, we're it, looks it. It, it looks, looks like a cool new space opera. Yeah, it looks like remember remember when you saw Sin City and you're like, this looked uh, like nothing I've seen. Yeah, before. it's like that. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not the same look, it's but the same it's look, the but same it is, feeling. Yeah. Right. It's like, oh shit! Um, two space hunters. You know the job space hunters. Space. Yeah, are they hunting space? Are tracking down a machine trying to oh. free itself. After taking it down, they witness a mystical phenomenon. The ghost of a young woman pulls itself out of the machine this as is, if the spaceship had a soul. This is trying one of the worst write-ups To I've understand ever heard. the nature of this entity, they start chasing the woman through space. And that's from the filmmakers describing it. That's this their is, words. This must be self-funded because nobody reads it's that and is like, I'm going to give you money. Oh, it's a Kickstarter, yeah. Yeah, that's a um, horrible write-up. Yeah, it's a dumb yeah. plot. I'm not... 
that opposed to chasing a, a, a spaceship soul. That could be cool. Let them do whatever the fuck they yeah, want. Yeah, it looks this cool. This man gets a free pass. Yeah. I'm again, watching this, it. This is a space cool. opera, so I guarantee that the plot that they described is not evident when watching it. Where you're just going to be like, I don't know what anything's don't happening, care. but I'm high and this is great. Like I'm, gonna that's gonna... Some, I'm not going to be high. Okay. I'm going to watch this sober as fuck. I'm going to be high. I'm going to watch it with my laser focused eyes, <laughs> envying the whole fucking process. That's what I'm going to do. Burning with jealous just, rage. That's what yeah. I'm going to do. And you know what? It's going to be great. I don't care if this is good or not, like in terms of plot. Mm-hmm. Just it's, you know what it is? It's in the drive zone. You remember Drive, the movie Drive? Oh, I yeah. love Drive. That's a bad story. We all agree on that. It's, it's yeah, a subpar it's a, story. It's a very, I wouldn't call it bad, but there's not anything to it it's a subpar story made by an excellent filmmaker yeah. yes Refn is an excellent director and this has drive potential it does drive yeah for sure drive just hits me right in the filmmaker like just I, right I in the filmmaking really gland. like drive yeah yeah this is this has that potential dave i get that vibe from it yeah. have you seen me hyped like this for anything in the past no i'm glad you like it pretty fucking hyped yeah we're we're super hyped for this goddamn yeah. movie Short film, whatever it is. Like this is like WrestleMania hype for me. Damn. That's how much I liked this. I'm glad because I feel like you're more excited than me. I um, definitely am. And that that's always nice when I bring it's a good thing. Uh, yeah. yeah, a movie that deserves more hype that gets more hype than the hype I already had you, for it. You've given me joy today, Dave. I will not forget this. Okay. A uh, a, a, a just a big old help and a joy. Mm. <laughs> Slopped it a on you like, a, full of joy. like an overflowing cup of joy. Just an overflowing, <laughs> bubbling cup what of I don't, joy. What I don't, Sizzling cup what of I don't joy. appreciate yes. is the speed with which you <laughs> embrace the semen at metaphors. <laughs> like, it's like we're kind of in the ice cream zone. And you're like, no, man, I'm going right to come. I'm going straight I'm going to come. Straight to this boner. It's going right there. Like mm. all the blood in my body right, right. now. Mm. Well, yeah. that's the hierarchy. There's ice cream and then there's semen. <laughs> Right it's the food pyramid. Yeah. It's but you not, were like on a it. race there. It's the, it's the, food, it's the two food groups. <laughs> the food <laughs> groups. Food <laughs> Good <laughs> God. <laughs> Are you getting nutrients from Splooge, bro? Is, uh, that, is that how you're doing life? Man, I, I guess I need to uh, do some research. Times are hard. Times are tough. <laughs> times are tough. I'm not going to lie. We've been unemployed a long time. unemployed for it's really seven cheap. months to get semen to eat. I don't know if anybody knows. Oh, I don't yeah. think the rest of the audience knows oh, that. Yeah. Right. Semen's the cheapest food there is. It's yeah. a renewable resource. It yeah. Is. It really is. I'm glad we ended on this <laughs> note. Yeah. Real happy about that. All right, Adam. <laughs> fucking Dave. Adam, thank you so much for oh, you're, you're being, welcome. On the, being on the show. I enjoyed myself. Gonna, what do you have stuff what to the play? hell do you want to plug? Uh, well, those of you who are listening probably know that I co-host a podcast with the Michael Swaim called One Upsmanship on the Small Beans Network. There's a chance I'm going to co-host a podcast with Adam Todd Brown called Sport Horse. That's such a good title. I love it. It's about sports. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the Real Gans with a Z. And, you know, one day I'll have other things and I will use this microphone for those things. Mm. Excellent. But until then, but until those then, are the things. I would also like to plug Dave, keep talking about semen. <laughs> Spend the rest of my plug time talking about semen, nope. please. I'm <laughs> going to press stop recording. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. Our music is produced by Chris Corlew. You can follow him on Twitter at at the Corlew, C-O-R-L-E-W, and find more music at shipwreckedsailor.bandcamp.com. Our artwork is produced by Justin Brown. You can follow him on Twitter at at Justin T. Brown, and find more of his artwork at artnessbyjustinbrown.com and justinbrown.info. Hey, everyone. This podcast is part of Story Mode, the podcast network of Gamefully Unemployed. You can support us and gain access to other great exclusive podcasts at patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds.